Good morning, boys and girls, mommies and daddies, and grandmommies and grandpoppies. As you may have probably noticed, we have taken a little break the last couple of days. Grandmommy had some things that she needed to do, and so I thought maybe the piggies might enjoy some time with their mommy. And so we took a little break. Well, we're back. Although I have to announce that we may start probably the first of the year just two days a week instead of three. I don't want to bore everybody all at one time. Um, today's story, boys and girls, mommies and daddies, and grandmommies and grandpoppies, today's story is hunting for the Christmas tree. Well, since they lived in the woods, where else are you going to go for a Christmas tree, right? You're certainly not going to go into town and buy one that has come all that long ways from like Minnesota and Wisconsin and all those cold countries, or I'm sorry, cold states that have beautiful Christmas trees and they ship them all down to Florida. Well, you're living in the woods and Mr. Farmer Brown taught all the boys and girls to always you know, either buy locally from somebody who grew trees in Florida or to chop down your own tree if you lived in a forest. Well, of course, Mr. Farmer Brown, <laughs> bless his heart, he and Mrs. Farmer Brown, they had a great big old-fashioned wagon, and they always piled a bunch of, of uh, hay bales on the back of the wagon, and they always took the boys and girls out to get a Christmas tree. Now, of course, their mothers or their fathers or whoever was home that particular day went with them just in case something happened. And they brought sandwiches and hot soup in a thermos jug. And they bought, brought some good hot chocolate. So the boys and girls just had a good time. And Mr. and Mrs. Farmer Brown, they sat up in front in, in the carriage that was pulling the wagon. I'll get it straight in a minute. And they had a ball. They had a ball. Well, secretly, Mr. Farmer Brown asked all the mamas, what is the biggest tree that you want in your house? Do you want a little tree, a skinny tree, a big bushy tree, a big tall tree? What do you want? And he wrote it all down. And so Mrs. Farmer Brown had the list in her pocket. And every once in a while, she'd pull it out and she'd whisper to Mr. Farmer Brown, see that tree over there? I think that's what Mrs. Frankie Fox said that she would like to have. You know, Frankie Fox's mother? I think that's the one she would like to have. Let me check my list. And so she would check her list real quick. And so they would stop and he would say, well, boys and girls, what do you think about that tree over there? And some of the boys and girls liked it, and some of the boys and girls, of course, didn't like it. Well, all the boys and girls had been told by their mamas what to look out for. And so Frankie Fox says, that might be what my mama wants. I don't know. What do you think, Mr. Farmer Brown? Mrs. Farmer Brown, what do you think? And so when they found one that they liked, and Mrs. Farmer Brown poked Mr. Farmer Brown and says, that's the right one, because that's what's on her list. Well, then Mr. Farmer Brown said, oh, I think that's a mighty fine tree. Let's go chop it down and put your name on it. And of course, Mrs. Farmer Brown had already made out paper tags about this big that had all their names on each tag and a cord that was hanging on the tag that they were gonna hang on the tree so they wouldn't get them all mixed up. Mrs. Farmer Brown, She's just as cool as Mr. Farmer Brown is. People just don't know because he gets all the fun. He gets to go out with the boys and girls and he gets all the fun. Well, this time, Mrs. Farmer Brown, thank goodness she came. She's keeping those kids straight. I tell you right now, she was doing good. So it became Piggly and Wiggly Squiggly. They had not found their tree yet. And Mrs. Mrs. Piggy had said, well, time we get it in a bucket. 
and put the sand around it. Huh. I don't know. I don't think it should be over five and a half feet tall because we have to stand on a stool anyway to decorate it. So I, I don't know, Mr. Farmer Brown. I think a pretty smaller one would be really nice for our house. And Mr. Farmer Brown says, okay, I'll write that down and give it to Mrs. Farmer Brown and she'll put it on the list. So, sorry. So they had found big, pretty tall ones and they had found little teeny tiny squatty ones and oh my goodness gracious, they had found, you know, skinny and fat and bushy and, and, and just everything. And all of a sudden, they came around the corner in the woods and Mr. Farmer Brown looked at Mrs. Farmer Brown and he says, see that tree over there? I think that's it, don't you? And she looked at her list real quick and she says, well, let's get out and measure it. So they stopped the wagon and they got off their seat and went over to measure the tree. And the boys and girls that had already found their trees they looked at Wiggly and Piggly and Squiggly and they said, really, they're gonna measure your tree? And Squiggly says, hey, look, I'm not as tall as the little bad wolf and Allie the alligator. I'm just a little bit taller than Patty Pig is. We can't reach the tree. We have to get up on a, on a footstool on a ladder. I had to climb up on a ladder last year to put the star on the tree. Oh. We didn't think about that. And Sally Skunk says, why do you think my tree is so little? <laughs> now, can you see Sadie Skunk and Sally Skunk as little as they are, especially Sadie? She's so itty-bitty, really little. Trimming that Christmas tree at their house? I mean, really, you know? It, it's just truly a fun thing to watch. So... Mr. Farmer Brown was measuring the tree, and he says to Mrs. Farmer Brown very quietly, I think this is the right size, don't you? And she walked around the tree, and she looked at all the tree, and she says, and it's a very pretty tree, too. Do you think it's too bushy, too, too full? Mrs. Piggy said she didn't want a great big tree. Well, Mr. Farmer Brown says, it's, it's, it's the right height. It's actually a few inches a lot shorter than what she said that the highest, tallest tree could be. So that that's all right. And he says, if she wants, we can kind of trim some limbs off here and there. I, I see a couple that we could trim off and it wouldn't be quite so bushy. Okay. So he called over Piggy, Wiggly, and Squiggly, and he says, okay, boys, what do you think about this tree here? And Piggly and Wiggly at the same time says, oh, Mr. Farmer Brown, and Squiggly says, well, we were kind of hoping that you were picking that out for us because we liked it. We saw it and we liked it. So thank you for helping us pick it out. Well, Mr. Farmer Brown cut the tree down and he put it on the back of the wagon with all the other trees. And Mrs. Farmer Brown put a tag on it that said, Piggly, Wiggly, Squiggly. Thank goodness for those tags because by the time the boys and girls got home, and thank goodness there wasn't any accidents. But, you know, by the time they got home, they were so excited, they forgot what their tree looked like. So it was a good thing that Mr. Farmer Brown had, or Mrs. Farmer Brown had thought about putting those tags on the trees. Well, before they went home, the mamas that came with them opened up the food. Oh, there was tomato soup in the thermos cups that would keep them hot. There was grilled cheese sandwiches. In fact, Mr. Farmer Brown brought a grill, a little portable grill, and he set it up on a log, and they put grilled cheese sandwiches on the grill. Oh, my goodness gracious. Grandmommy, we sure like one right now. That sounds so good for lunch, doesn't it? Well, they ate their grilled cheese sandwiches, and they drank their hot soup, and they enjoyed the hot chocolate because Mrs. Farmer Brown, bless her heart, she brought a bag of little mini marshmallows, and you know that's the best thing you can have. Well, 
they piled into the front of the wagon because their trees were in the back, and off they went. And Mr. Farmer Brown, he was so sweet. He was so funny. He made a big circle. And the first person he dropped off was Frankie Fox. And he went through and he found the tag that said Frankie Fox's tree. And he pulled it out of the wagon and he carried it up to the house. And Frankie ran in the house and says, Mama, Mama, come and look at our tree. Well, Mr. Farmer Brown, he even offered to set the tree up for Mrs. Fox. But she said, no. She said, I can do it. And she says, and my husband will be home in about another half hour from work. And so thank you very much. But you go help some of the other ladies. And Mr. Farmer Brown says, okay. Well, then he went to Ollie the Otter and dropped off his tree. And he goes around and he drops off uh, Allie the Alligator. And then he drops off the three little piggies. And he come up back up at the top of the circle and he dropped off Sally and Sadie Skunk. And he kind of lives in the middle. Well, that way, kind of. I guess if a circle would be 11 o'clock, he probably lives at. And so, of course, Little Bad Wolf, or <clears throat> excuse me, LBW, you know, is living with them. And so then they got home. Well, everybody had the most fun that night, putting the tree up and decorating it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mommy Piggy, she loved the old-fashioned look. She wanted all the, the lights to be all different colors, and she wanted the garland to drape like that and to be silver. She just, and they had the prettiest ornaments. Oh, my goodness gracious the prettiest ornaments you ever did see because she had collected them from her mama and her grandmama. Those ornaments were so pretty. They were so old and delicate. And Piggly Wiggly and Squiggly, they knew they better be careful because they had broke one ornament a couple of years ago. And Mommy Pig, she cried because it was such a pretty ornament and she knew how old it was. It was older than she was. Now, put that on your Christmas tree. So everybody went to bed that night, and she knew that everybody in the forest was tired, but they were also breathing a sigh of relief because now they finally got the tree up and Santa Claus could come. Well, Mrs. Herma Brown was talking to the ladies while she had a few free moments at that afternoon. And she said, what are we going to do for Santa Claus? Do you think he should come before we leave for uh, Princess Hannah's trip? You know that Mama's hadn't even thought about that. When is Santa Claus going to come? Because the boys and girls will be gone. They're going to go. Remember, they're going to fly over to... M M Maldinia, Maldinia, I think it was, to spend Christmas with Princess Hannah and her mama, the queen. Oh, when will Santa Claus come to the woods? Okay, boys and girls, we'll work on that one. And I will see you Wednesday. Okay. So boys and girls, mommies and daddies, and grandmommies and grandpoppies, you have a wonderful day today. And tune in Wednesday when we come back to see, maybe, have they got an idea about Santa Claus coming early? I don't know. They're going to have to call him up and, and ask him if he can make a special trip. Who knows? Or maybe he can leave the toys at Princess Hannah's castle. No, that might be, you'd have to have an, another suitcase to lug around with you to put all the toys in that these boys and girls are gonna get. And their jammies they're gonna get, and you know they're gonna get shirts, they're gonna get, they're gonna get everything. So, wow, you'd have to have another suitcase with you. Hmm, that wouldn't be a good idea, would it? Okay, Wednesday we'll see how 
things are progressing and see what's going on with school. Okay? Now, mommies and daddies, grandmommies and grandpappies, what do you do? Leave a comment, like, share. I'm thinking there's something else, wasn't there? I don't know. Look at the bottom of your screen and see what you're supposed to do. Okay? All right. Grandmommy will see you Monday or Wednesday. Bye-bye.